One mole of an ideal gas is allowed to expand. One mole of an ideal gas is allowed to expand reversibly and adiabatically. Write down the question. One mole of an ideal gas is allowed to expand reversibly and adiabatically from a temperature of 27 degrees Celsius. Adiabatically. From a temperature of 27 degrees Celsius, if the work done by the gas in the process is 3 kilojoule, if the work done by the gas by the gas in the process is 3 kilojoule, 3 kilojoule, what is the final temperature? CV is given. 20 kilo, sorry, 20 joule. CV value is this. <coughs> one mole of an ideal gas. One mole of an ideal gas is allowed to expand reversibly and adiabatically. From a temperature of wait, from a temperature of 27 degrees Celsius. If the work done by the gas in the process is 3 kilo joule, yeah. right? Work done is 3 kilo joule. Final temperature is what? CV value is given. 450 is one of the options we have. <laughs> What is CV? Yeah, it's 450. It's 450. Answer given is C. It's 150. Answer is 150. Answer is 150. Check your calculation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's 150. It'll be 150. 150. Final temperature. Final temperature. The question is what? The question is final temperature. The final temperature is equal to final temperature. What are you getting? 177. 177. Yes, that's, that's so options are 100, 450, 150, 400. One mole of an ideal gas is allowed to expand reversibly and adiabatically from a temperature of 27 degrees. Okay, done. What we need to use LCV delta D. Okay, next line down. <laughs> Second law of thermodynamics. Right? So before going into the statement of this law, first two, three things we need to understand. Right? Uh, sir, what happened to the First law. This first law is observation. He was equal to tell. Ah, so okay, I'm finished. First law, the last class only we did, no? Oh, right. What? Okay, what? What you were expecting more? Kita first law. So there is no actual statement to it. No, it's not. Yeah, the last class I did. Any more? 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 Six hours more than enough. It's a graph. Six hours more than enough. Huh? Ah, there are many statement files. Except for the entropy one. Yes. Huh? It has some entropy statements. Entropy, we'll see that. So, I see, first of all, uh, <laughs> to understand this uh, second law of thermodynamics, one thing we have to understand here that is spontaneous and 
and non spontaneous process what is a spontaneous process <laughs> Which does not require any external help. It happens very quickly. Yeah. Very quickly. On its own. On its own. On its own. What is this process? If I take you to the roof and just push, you come down. What is this process? Spontaneous. Spontaneous. Homicide. Spontaneous is process is. See, like you said, it's correct. It is a process which takes place on its own or after a proper initiation. Initiate here and then leave. वो प्रोसेस होगा, राइट? सो डीजल पेट्रोल में इफ यू बर्न इट उसके बाद वो खुद से होगा, राइट? सो दैट इज़ आल्सो स्पॉन्टेनियस। वन प्रोसेस वेर यू हैव ना। या, सो दैट्स व्हाट इट्स। आइडर इट्स टेक्स प्लेस ऑन इट्स ओन और आफ्टर एन प्रॉपर इनिशिएशन। इनिशिएट करके लीव। इफ इट इज़ हैपनिंग इट इज़ स्पॉन्ट
In reactions also, right? In reactions also. No, actually, the process is, I'll come back to this point. The spontaneous process takes place on its own or after a proper initiation. No, it's not like non-spontaneous process does not take place. Condition for any process to take place, whether it is spontaneous or non-spontaneous. I am just trying to make you understand what are factors we need to consider to you know to understand the feasibility of any process. Got it? So we have two factors: enthalpy and randomness, right? That is entropy. Okay. So when we have these two thermodynamic terms, so you have to consider these two factors to understand about a process. So what we did did here. We combine these two factors with the help of temperature and we have given a new thermodynamic term whose formula is this and this we call it as Gibbs free energy. You try to understand the significance of this. Why we require this Gibbs free energy? If this delta G is not there, then you have to consider two factors, delta H and delta S. Right, so what we uh, did, we have combined these two factors and we have given a new thermodynamic term. And with this thermodynamic term, we can understand whether the process is spontaneous, feasible or not. Okay, that is the significance of this phase. Uh, because entropy depends upon time. We'll discuss that later. Okay, so this is all. This is the overall thing which we need to understand about here. Now the process is spontaneous and non-spontaneous process. So spontaneous process are those process which takes place on its own or after a proper initiation. So what is the unit for delta S? Delta S is joule per uh, mole per degree or Kelvin. It's energy. See, first of all, what is this unit of this? Energy joule. Energy. What is this? Energy. So this should also be energy. Right. So this is equals to energy. So energy per Kelvin is 10 times. Okay. So a spontaneous process are those process which takes place on its own or after a proper initiation. For example, flow of water down the hill. Right. Non-spontaneous process are those process for which we need to put some extra effort into it. And continuously, it does not mean that non-spontaneous process does not take place. Okay, it takes place by some external source, external energy. You stop that energy, the process won't take place. When you switch on the motor in the household, the water goes into the tank, into the roof, right, through the pipe. Switch off the, if you switch off the motor, the water does not flow into the pipe, right, because we are going from low energy to high energy, right, low potential to high potential. For that, you need to give some energy into it, right. So this process is what? This is non-spontaneous process. You should switch off the motor, the water does not flow, right? But when the water comes down the hill, it's high to low, easily it can, it can come out, right? So that's why it is a spontaneous process. So first of all, you just uh, keep this in mind that non-spontaneous process does not mean that the process does not take place. It takes place when you supply energy into it. So both process possible. One requires continuous energy, supply of energy, and one, it takes place on its own or after a proper initiation, correct, right? So for any process, we have two factors like I discussed, energy and randomness. Energy means enthalpy, randomness means entropy. These two conditions, we have combined these two conditions, these two thermodynamic term, and we have given a new thermodynamic term, that is gives free energy, and on the basis of this only, we'll define whether the given reaction is feasible or not. And the condition for that is what, delta G, less than zero, right? Delta G is equal to zero, the system is at equilibrium. So why, why and how we get that condition, delta G less than zero, that also we'll discuss, here, right? So first of all, you write down this term, term, spontaneous process. Spontaneous process, spontaneous process, write down. <coughs> it is a process which has a natural tendency process which has a natural tendency to occur by its own to occur by its own or after a proper initiation under a given set of conditions example you write down flow of electricity flow of water down the hill all these are all these process does not require any initiation right burning of fuels carbon 
requires initiation. Burning of fuels or carbon requires initiation, right? So that is also spontaneous, but it requires initiation, okay? Right on next line. A spontaneity means, a spontaneity means feasibility of a process. But potential difference, even like the flow of water. Ah, so that even also the heat flows is because of difference in temperature. That is also spontaneous. Two object at different temperature when it comes into contact, heat transfer takes place. That is also spontaneous. So, but there's a continuous energy, right? Even when the flow of water, there's continuous gravitational energy. Yeah. Oh, so, why so the gravitational energy is everywhere? So that we are not uh, considering. Yeah, every reaction is not uh, That we are not considering. So that is understood. Gravity to so to. Electron ke motion will be gravity, you see. gravity. So gravity we are not considering. It is actually it flows because of the gravity only. We have a net downward force, that's why it comes. So then like for electricity, gravity doesn't really play a part. Yeah. So, so there is potential difference. Huh? So there will take potential difference, continuous potential. No, actually you see, gravity is gravity has a role in every process. Right? That we are not considering. What happens when the two object, like you said, um, like uh, the two object at different temperature comes into the contact? So heat flows from high temperature to low temperature. That is spontaneous. Current electricity flows from high potential to low potential. That is also spontaneous. So whenever you have potential difference, flow of current will be there. Potential difference is zero. There is no current, no flow. It's still gravity is there. So gravity we are not considering. In that way, the all the process becomes one spontaneous. It is not taking place. Right, so that is not be a concern. So example, what did you write? Uh, all these three examples we have, carbon and fuel burning is uh, also spontaneous but requires initiation. Next point you write down, spontaneity means the feasibility of a process, feasibility of a process, and the process can be very slow or extremely fast. Rusting of iron is also an spontaneous process, very slow. Right? One note you write down, all natural processes are spontaneous and irreversible in nature. Irreversible in nature. Next point, non-spontaneous process. Write down. It is a process, it is a process which, which does not occur on its own, which does not occur on its own or by, or by, any initiation. Example, flow of heat from cold to hot body. Diffusion of gas from low pressure to high pressure. Diffusion of gas from low pressure to high pressure. One note to write down. So what was the first example? Flow of heat from cold to hot body. Cold to hot. Cold to hot. So how is that? That is spontaneous, non spontaneous. That's why it's not spontaneous. Hot to cold is spontaneous. Hot to cold is spontaneous. Can we say that any endothermic reaction is non spontaneous? No, but then there might be entropy. No, entropy is different. It is non spontaneous, this one. Yes, sir. See, water when you boil, it converts into uh, vapor, right? So, boiling is a non spontaneous process, but evaporation is an spontaneous process. In that, also, the water is converting into vapor. Both the process, one is spontaneous, other one is non spontaneous. Boiling is non spontaneous, evaporation is spontaneous. We are getting vapor only. Driving force here, it is what? In, uh, in both the process, driving force is entropy. Because of entropy only the process is taking place. Because gaseous particles has more entropy than uh, liquid particles. It has more random motion. No? When you see, if you have two gases, one at high energy, other at low energy. So high energy, more randomness will be there. So that gaseous particles will have high entropy. Right? So both process, evaporation and boiling. Evaporation is spontaneous, boiling is non-spontaneous. So continuously we have to provide the heat. Okay, non-spontaneous. But in both the process, we are getting vapor. The driving force is still same, and that is entropy, not energy. Right? That's why we have two conditions, two factors for any process to take place. One is enthalpy, and other one is entropy. To understand a process is feasible or not, you need to consider these two factors. 
and later on to you know reduce our effort, we combine these two factors and we have given a new term that is gas free energy. Okay. So write down next um, one note. You write down. It is not always true that non-spontaneous process. It is not always true that non-spontaneous process does not occur at all. Non-spontaneous process does not occur at all. It may take place when when the energy supplied from any external source from any external source. Okay? 